Hey guys and gals, Justin here with JHR Model Works, and I want to go ahead and participate in Fast Jimmy 71's um, six questions. These are some pretty cool questions in my opinion, so I thought I would go ahead and do them. Uh, first, I would however like to take a couple of minutes uh, say I, thank you to all of my subscribers. You guys are absolutely awesome. Um, we're real close to 500, I think. Also, I don't work for Amazon anymore. <laughs> starting this Monday I started back at Samsung they've got a new project uh, so I am back to doing cell site configurations or I will be whenever I get all my logins back and I can actually do work um, also shop cards I do shop card shout out videos I haven't gotten a shop card in a long time so if you just look down in the description if you have a shop card you want to send me there's an email address. If you email me, I'll send you an address to send that to. Um, and that about covers that. Oh, I am working on my own shop card. I had a design laid out and I had everything kind of where I wanted it to be. Um, but I think I want to swap out the Porsche 928 for the wide body 356. I'm kind of proud of the 356, so I kind of wanted to add that in there. Um... So yeah, that covers kind of all the news type stuff. So let's go ahead and get on to these questions. Uh, so Fast Jimmy 71 this one's for you. I'm not sure if you even watch me, but here you go. Uh, what kind of glue do you like to use? I use several for different reasons. I use the good old fashioned, turn it the right way, Tamiya Extra Thin for anything that is not painted. So when I go to pre-assemble body work or engines, stuff like that, I like to use Tammy Extra Thin. Sometimes I will use this bottle, which this is some Tammy Extra Thin that has been blended in with some Plastruct, which is a stronger level of MEK, which is hotter, so it melts the plastic a little more. Um, but... It's pretty rare that I will use this bottle. If I'm doing anything painted, I will typically use super glue. I use Bob Smith Super Gold Plus or Elmer's White Glue for my glass or anything that's going on the body. And for anything else that's painted, gets some good old fashioned Bob Smith Maxi Cure. And that's going to cover my glues. Uh, your paint. I do not have a favorite paint. I have a lot of paint. Um, let's go ahead and take you guys off the stand here for a second. All right, into the shaky cam mode we go. This drawer is there's a couple of extra acrylic Tamiya, but that they don't count. Uh, this board is mostly water-based acrylics. There's a couple of enamels in there that I use for flocking. This drawer is all Tammy acrylics. Then we get to this cabinet. This is all Tammy lacquers that I have rebottled and pre-thinned. And then you've got my Steinle Res and UMP primers. Um, I love the Tamiya lacquer line. I absolutely love these paints, but the Tamiya's line is so limited. This drawer is all zero paints, gravity colors and i don't use these very much uh, because they're enamels the ak extreme metal the color is great but the paint itself is really soft it takes forever to dry you wait 24 hours for this stuff to dry and even then it's still soft and you can still leave fingerprints in it sometimes so i while i wanted to use these the colors are great the actual color itself is fantastic I don't use them because it just takes forever. But yeah, like all my zero paints, it goes deeper into the back back there. 
Uh, this drawer is um, Alclads. There's a couple of bottles of MRP, which I am not impressed with their bronze at all. And I'm just starting to play with these super metallic two colors. Uh, the gold looks gorgeous. I've used the titanium a few times, and the titanium is fantastic. I have not gotten any of the other colors. I ordered two bottles of the super silver, but I never actually got them. So I've been trying to follow up on that because that was months ago, but they just haven't come in. Yeah, but this is mostly Alclads and those. And that's pretty much it. So the, uh, the Tamiya acrylics and the water-based acrylics usually get used for interiors and some detail painting, like a lot of detail painting. Uh, I'll brush paint with them. I hate airbrushing with Vallejo. Absolutely cannot stand it. I just, I cannot get a good finish out of it no matter what. I've tried using thinner. I've tried using distilled water. I've tried adding the flow retarder. I just, I don't like it. It does not come out well. Um, I can f spray the Tammy acrylics, but when I spray them, I thin them with Mr. Hobby leveling thinner. The, the Mr. Leveling Thinner is great stuff. You can also use Tamiya's Lacquer Thinner with Retarder. It also is, it's the same type of thing. But I find Tamiya's Lacquer Thinner is more expensive. So I pretty much just use Tamiya's Lacquer Thinner when I'm doing the Tamiya Lacquers. As for the Zeros, I love Zero Paints for their range. They've got so many colors, and there's so many... I mean, there's just so much. Whatever you want, there's pretty much a color. If they don't have it, they'll mix it if you get them a color code. Uh, Gravity won't mix for you. Gravity's got a much more limited um, selection, but they still have a really good selection. And honestly, I think Gravity sprays better than Zero. I've had issues with zero crazing plastic quite a bit. Zero can be really hot and individual colors. Some colors are hotter than others. So for the most part, I say you spray zero super light coats. Do not even think about going wet. And you wait 10 minutes between coats. And even then, sometimes that's not enough to save your, your, your plastic from the lacquer thinners that they use. Uh, gravity is, seems to be much more forgiving in that regard. In fact, in my upcoming paint video, I actually mess up and I have a moment where my hand cramps and I just pose a streak of paint on the body and I have to go back and repaint, just cover the whole body to match and it, the paint came out perfectly fine as opposed to if I had done that with zero, uh, you, I'd be stripping the body. Um, I love Alclads for metallics, but their chromes are just so soft, so, so delicate that it just rubs right off. Um, so yet everything has a reason for why I have it and why I use it and, you know, different paints have different functions. Um, what part of, of the building do you like starting first? I always build my bodies first. Um... Or I always at least paint the bodies first. And the reason is that if the body doesn't turn out, there's not really a point in doing the rest of the kit. Like if something goes horribly, horribly wrong to a point that you can't save it or you can't strip it, uh, which I have had happen one time. I had a the Lamborghini Aventador Roadster. My Cocker Spaniel, before she, when she was still alive, tripped me coming in the house and I landed with my nearly 300 pound butt face down with the body underneath me it was shattered in pieces and I had already built the rest of the car so at that point I had to go spend another 50 bucks to buy another copy of the kit just to get a body and so now I've got an Aventador Roadster chassis unbuilt in a box in my garage somewhere that's gonna never will never have a body on it, so there's no point in building it. But I've, I guess I've got spare parts. So 
Um, I always do my bodies first. What part of building do you least like to work on? If you're talking technique, decals. I, I don't like decals. I don't know. And this is coming from someone who can print his own decals and has before. I don't like doing decals. I'm not good with them. The bigger the decal, the worse it is. I wrinkle them. They don't slide around where they want to go. They stick. They tear. I just Decals. As far as what section of the build, I would have to say I find interiors the least interesting part of a build. Um, with the body, you're fully engaged in getting that super high gloss shine. You know, you've got a color you want to build. You've you've got you know you you there's excitement there. Um, engine. You know, there's you want to play with the engine and wire it up and do all the, the cool sh to the engine, you know. Um, chassis and suspension can be kind of boring, but at the same time, you know, I'll cut the springs, the shocks up and rebuild the shocks with springs. And, you know, that's kind of fun. And so, but interiors are just interiors. I've gotten a little better because I have started to get into where I flock things now and I try to put a little more work into the detail and that gets me more engaged. But for the most part, when I get to the interior, a lot of times it's the end. It's like one of the last things I do before I fully assemble the kit. And by the time I get to the interior, I'm often, one, interior is boring. Two, I am done with this build. I'm ready for the something else. Uh, half the time I'm already planning my next build, you know, I'm already looking at colors, I'm looking at aftermarket stuff, I'm thinking about how I want to modify this or modify that, or, you know, I'm going to build ignition coils from scratch, or I'm already planning on the next one by the time I get to the interior. So, part of the, like, actually, component-wise, interiors is probably my least favorite part. What is your favorite kit? I have two answers for this. Favorite brand of kit is going to be Tamiya all day, every day, followed very closely by Hasegawa. They're just, they're very clean. If you're going to do sci-fi, then also Bandai. But um, Tamiya kits are engineered amazingly. They're, they just kind of fall together. Um, when I want something nice and easy... I grab a Tamiya kit. If I have just finished doing an AMT kit that makes me want to like end my modeling hobby altogether, my very next kit will be a Tamiya kit. Um, as far as my actual favorite kit is the Italeri Ferrari 250 GT California Spider. That was my holy grail kit for a long time. Um, when I was looking, I was looking at the testers boxing. I didn't realize that Italeri did it. This is back when I was first starting. Um, the California Spider is my favorite car, like period, of all time. It is, the, in my opinion, it is the most beautiful car just ever. Um... And when I was looking on eBay, they were always like a hundred bucks. Um, so one year my wife was like, what do you want for Christmas? I was looking on eBay and I saw one come in for like 45 And I said, that, that's what I want for Christmas. And so I got to build what was at the time my Holy Grail kit. I threw absolutely everything at it. Like everything I could think of to throw at it. I like made fuel rails using guitar wire. I put in aftermarket ignition coils I made the ignition harnesses um, because they have a, the 250 California has the wires go into like a metal frame and then they come out the end of that frame and go to the distributors I mean I ran brake lines I just absolutely anything I could think of to throw at that build I threw at that build and it was just so much fun um, what is your least favorite kit? 
Uh, my least favorite manufacturer is AMT. I just every AMT kit I've ever built has fought with me to no end. Uh, AMT is a brand. They don't make anything new. They never make anything really new. They just rebox the same kits that they've been reboxing since the 60s. Um, I mean, maybe if they do a new... On rare occasions, they'll do something new. I think they did the new Camaro a few years... Like, several years ago. And that's the last thing I heard of them from them that has actually been new. Uh, it, other than that, it, everything is a rebox of the same molds they've been printing on for the last 60 years. They don't even clean up the molds. There's flash everywhere. Nothing fits. Um... They're just not fun kits for me to build. Now, I love the subjects. AMT has, like, all the muscle cars. Like, if you want a muscle car, it's going to... Well, you might have that in Ravel, but pretty much it's going to be an AMT kit. Um, but the detail is completely lacking. Um, you'll have a part that's supposed to be a carburetor, and it's just a blob of plastic. There's, you know, seams on everything. There's flash on everything. Nothing fits together. Um, there are a lot of work to make look good. And as far as my absolute least favorite kit, I did the, I think it's a 68 GT350 Mustang. I, I finished it. I did finish it. Um, I have never not finished a kit. I had to make myself finish that kit. That That's the kit that I'm talking about that made me just want to stop building when I was done building. Just nothing fit well. The front and rear clips that go on the body look like they belong to a whole different car. Like they weren't made for the, this kit at all. They just took them from some other kit. They don't line up. There's like in order to get the bodies to line up there is just a freaking sheet of putty from me trying to smooth out the edge between those two parts um the car sits like it's on a like a, it sits like a four by four it sits way freaking high it's just it, there's that kit really got me really got me um so yeah those are those are my six questions so I'm going to go ahead and copy those in the description below if you want to do these six questions as well and probably do it in less than 20 minutes like I did. Uh, I, I ramble. It's what I do. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Keep modeling and have a great day. Bye.